Hi there. I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting here in um, Needham, Massachusetts. We are a local yarn shop and we um, post this video. People are honking their horns outside. Um, sorry, we post um, this video once a week and uh, we may miss next week, I'm not sure. Uh, Robin is taking a vacation, which she is well deserved. Um, so we may not post next week. Uh, I wanted to update you on a few things. The Bruce Weinstein workshop has filled. We have a waiting list, so <coughs> if you're interested, people do drop out for one reason or another. So if you want, we can put you on the wait list. Um, a couple of little other um, administrative things. For the, we've been doing the um, Petite Knits Knit Along, and um, we're, we haven't, you have until the end of April to finish your projects to enter them in for cash prizes at the end. Um, I just wanted to tell you that people have been asking how do we enter our um, projects. So on the website there is um, under events, you can click on events and then there will be instructions on how to do that. If you have a problem after that, you can give us a call um, and hopefully one of us will be able to answer your question. Um, or not, if it's me, maybe not, I'm not sure. Um, we got a new stock of um, spin cycle in, for those of you, we had a lot of people during the sale, um, the online sale and during our Super Bowl sale bought a lot of um, spin cycle and we have more, we have some coming in all the time. Uh, we have some other new yarns which I'll get to in a minute and then just a couple of tidbits. Um, <coughs> was looking at one of my sweaters and it was pilling and most yarns pill at some point, um, though I don't think like the cottons, the, the most of the mercerized cottons, I don't think they do. Um, and some more tightly woven yarns don't. And the reason that you get pilling and the reason you get it a lot on cashmere, and I happen to have on a cashmere sweater today that's already got pills on it, and it's because the fibers are very short and so they come loose. Also sometimes the yarn is woven loosely or you knit it loosely. Um, fibers that are, or yarns that are knit tighter, those little hairs don't, those little bits of yarn don't come out as easily and that's what um, causes the pilling. Uh, you can use a, we have gleaners, although I think we're out of them in the shop right now, but we generally have them and they do a great job of um, getting the pills off. And sometimes you'll wear a sweater, it'll pill once, you'll clean it up and it won't do it again. Sometimes it continues to do that. Um, and you just have to either not be bothered by the pills. I don't like pilling on my sweaters, so I use my gleaner a lot to get rid of them. It takes a couple of minutes. Not a, It's not a big deal, but I don't like seeing those little balls of yarn hanging all over you. So just keep that in mind if when you're choosing yarns or when you're knitting, and if you choose to knit loosely on something, um, you, you risk getting more pilling than you would normally. I wanted to talk about something called rowing out, and we talked about it on Robin's sweater um, that she had um, had trouble with. And rowing out is when your, it's really basically when your knit side and purl side are, end up different. Your purl row and your knit row are different, that you're knitting one looser or tighter than the other. Generally, it's a purl, the purl side. And what happens is it will change your gauge and it will also when you're knitting back and forth, you can see um, the difference from row to row. That's not exactly what happened with Robins. What can happen is when you're knitting back and forth, 
your knit row and your purl row are different, and so you can see them. One's looking wonky and the other one isn't. The only way you can, and I know I've heard of people who knit their purl rows with a, with a smaller needle. Or if you can, and this is weird, but um, when you have interchangeable needles, you could put a, if you tend to purl loosely, you could put a smaller needle on the, um, the other, the, the one that's going to be purling. But you have to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, I don't know if you change, or, I don't know if you do short rows or something, I don't think that's going to work very well. But what happened with Robin's sweater, and I'm going to show you in a minute, um, what happened with Robin's is a little bit different in that she was, her rows don't look different. I don't think, I don't see a difference between one row or the next. But she was knitting the top of this sweater, the front and the back are knit yeah. flat back and forth. So you have a knit one row and a purl row row. When you get down to um, connecting the two for the sleeves, which is under the arm, you are knitting in the round. And what Robin found, although she's corrected it, I can still see a little bit, and that's probably because I know. Um, but Robin went from a size eight needle to a nine down here because the gauge was so different. She used this handy dandy little gauge thing. We have them in the shop now um, that magnifies um, the stitches so you can count them more easily. Anyway, when Robin and I just redid this and I said, I still think, and I don't, you know, the uneducated eye isn't going to see this, but I said, I still think the gauge is different from here to here. And it was off by a half a stitch um, four. over f four inches. Uh, yes. So that can make a slight difference, not a, not a huge difference, and not so that anybody would know. So that's what can happen, and you have to think. You, and don't keep knitting on something. When you go change from uh, knitting flat to knitting in the round, check your, gauge. check your gauge after you get going, because who wants to rip out a whole sweater because it looks doesn't look good from here down? Can I interject? Yes, because Robin's going to. The other thing we talked about is getting gauge initially in the round. Yes. So, Which I hadn't done. And I had someone do this in my uh, class yesterday. Um, knitting, what's it a class? Yeah, it was in my class. I was drew a blank there. Um, if you're going to be knitting in the round and back and forth on the same project, I recommend that you start out doing a gauge back and forth and, you know, get a good amount of that and then do it, continue and do it in the round and see if there's a difference. And if there is, then I would change your needle and keep doing it in the round till it matches um, or vice versa, um, depending on which gauge you prefer, but you want them to, um, you want them to match. And there are lots of YouTube videos. There are. It's not hard. They're YouTube, You don't yeah. have to knit a, a tube. No. Um, but it's worth that little bit of time, extra time, to do, to do them and because you don't want to get to a point where you're way down in the sweater and you look and, oh my God, what is that? I did rip what did I do? Some. Yeah, so Robin had to rip but not some of hers. Yeah, not a ton. So I had somebody today came in with a gauge and we had to um, talk about that. So we're talking about in the in our uh, Making a Sweater That Fits class. So we're making sure that people are right on gauge if we have to change needle sizes, if we have to change size in the pattern, if we, you know, have to do something that <coughs> will make this fit. So um, this was an exercise that we did in the class, and I wanted to share this with you because I think it's really important. And this was getting the right body measurements. So here's my little, excuse the drawing, um, I haven't been drawing much in the last several years. Um, and what we did was we measured each other, and I don't recommend that you measure yourself. You need someone, a partner, 
to make sure that you are doing this correctly. So the first thing that we did is you can do your cross the back. So this is from shoulder to shoulder across your back. And that's a good measurement to have just because you want to take that measurement to make sure that something's going to fit you properly across the back. You may ha have the strange case where you might have to have fewer stitches in the back because you have a smaller back than you do front, which is a technical thing, um, and I've only seen a few people ever really do anything about it. Um, your upper bust is the next measurement you want to do, which is above the widest part of your bust. And believe it or not, there are some people who are wider up here than across the fullest part of their bust. And um, that can happen. So then if you do what we call your um, lower bust, or your actual bust, which is um, the widest part of your bust, and you, that's where you really need a partner because they have to go around. You need to make sure you're going level around across your back. If you try to do it yourself, the measuring tape may slip down or be up too high, and you're not going to get an accurate measurement. And just because you wear a size 32 bra, you could be a 32 C, so that's not 32 inches. That's, um, but some people say, oh, my bra size is this. Well, the bra size is measuring your chest, not your breast. So um, that's you really need that. Um, the uh, next one we do is your upper arm around here. And somebody in my class in another class was the same size as me, but she has very wide, um, heavier arms than I do. And that's going to be a problem in some sweaters. And that's why as you go, when you start doing your sleeve, you should try it on. Because you could end up with a sleeve that's too tight. And I did a sweater not too long ago where the sleeve was just ridiculously tight. I had to take it out. Or it could be ridiculously big. So, <coughs> and you're gauge on your sleeve, and I, I've had this problem, I may have talked about it before. I have so many classes that I can't remember who I talked to. So if this is repetitive, I'm sorry. But on a sleeve, and you're knitting in the round, and I knit on shorties, the little small ones, my sleeve gauge gets um, tighter. And so I can do this because I can be very aware of it all the time that I'm knitting. I knit looser on the sleeve. And sometimes I catch myself. So I, I don't recommend it. And some people, uh, some designers recommend that you go up a needle size. So check your gauge on your sleeve as well. The next measurement is from your armhole. And it isn't way up here in your armpit, because goodness knows, you don't want a sweater that is up in your armpit. So. A good measurement is like two and a half, two inches down from your actual armpit. And then, so that measurement is you want this two inches down to your waist. Then you want to measure that same to your hip and then to your lower hip. And I'll tell you what those are in a minute. Or <coughs> another really good measurement you want to have is a sweater that fits you really well. And you measure that so that you always know where you want it to fall. Another measurement is your arm. And it isn't from here to here. You want from, again, two inches out from your armpit to your wrist. And if you want, you can even measure if you want three-quarter length sleeves sometime. You might keep that measurement. And this is all, um, you can get these from me, but um, this is all for you to keep in your notes so that you, when you go to find out what pattern or what size you want to do in a pattern, you have this reference. The other thing that you want to do is your waist and then your hip, which is at your hip bones, and then your hip 
um, your lower hip, which is, I include the widest part of my hips. Yes. Yeah, and my backside, yeah. Another um, good one is just your wrist. Why not have that measurement in your, um, so, and finally, your armhole depth. And this gets really important, particularly if you're doing a raglan, because I found, I was knitting a sweater once, and I noticed it on all the people. It was up, it was tight up under their armpit. So it was a raglan um, sweater. So I ended up measuring from here to here where the raglan started down to where I wanted it. And it was, in fact, longer than they said. Now, given that, you might, if you're doing rag, I continued to do the raglan increases, but if you do that, you're making the whole width of your sweater a little bit larger. I was fine with that, and it turned out to be perfect. You may find that you just want to knit straight down and not do the raglan in increases, but you want to have a longer armhole depth. So that's, this is an important, um, measurement to have. We measured each other in um, another class that I had, and there were two women who were almost the identical same size, except this armhole depth here, which was so interesting. So she was longer here than the person who had almost the same measurements everywhere. So um, this is a great exercise. Um, if you want a copy of this, you can um, come in the shop and I'll give you a copy. Um, I finally finished my cumulus with the round neck. And as I showed you before, I um, did not do the I-cord because, not because I didn't want to do it. I, I don't mind doing an I-cord. I just didn't prefer it on the sweater. So I did a ribbed, twisted rib for the um, bottom um, and for the sleeves. But then for the um, neckline, I did a, um, and I was showing last time how to pick up the stitches, I did a rolled neck, which is basically picking up the stitches and just plain knitting, and then it rolls over on itself. And I liked this. I didn't, I liked where the neck was. I did as I picked up, and I think I mentioned it, along the um, side of the neckline, I picked up fewer stitches than I did um, here in the actual stitch. I picked up stitch for stitch on the back and on, on the front because it is stitch for stitch. But when you're on here and you're, you're now picking up along rows, and if you think about it and you look at gauges, you have more rows than you have stitches across in most gauges. So I didn't want to pick up stitch for stitch because these were rows and the stitches, if you think about it, the stitches are often longer this way than they are wide. Um, so if you look at, look on a gauge this somewhere. It tells you how to do that because this is the yeah, neck so you're, that calls for. Yeah, so th often they'll tell you to do Three, skip one, three, skip one. What does it say on Robin's? Um, is the neck down there? Two stitches for every three rows. So that's, when we're talking about rows, we're talking about here it's rows. But if you look down here, it's stitches across. It's not rows. These are, as you're picking up, you're picking up into the stitches. Here you're picking up into rows, even though you're going into a stitch, but they're actual rows. So that's good for that formula. I have a finished project that I wanted to show you. Um, our amazing knitter, um, Ellen, knit this. And it's the um, uh, I'm going to say it wrong. It's from Crea Brea, and it's the Crea. Oh, what's wrong with me that I don't know the name of this? Can you read that? I know the name of it, and it's... Co Coran Cardigan. 
caravan. We'll find it. Um, <laughs> we'll figure the it out. The Cara Cardigan, yeah. I think it is, but I, I'm not sure. Anyway, I saw somebody, a couple people on some podcasts had this on. So we got in um, more colors in the modern cotton from Barocco. And so we had this made up. And I know it doesn't look like, fa it doesn't look fabulous just holding it up, but boy, you put this on and this is like um, the nicest little sweater you could wear in the summer. It's just beautiful. Um, what we did have one issue with, in this she has nine buttons, I believe, although it looks like, I don't know if Robin added more buttonholes, yeah. but I did not like, I picked a button, which I loved. I don't know if you can see these, Robin, but these are the buttons that I loved because I, I think they kind of, they doll it up a little bit, but not too much. But when I put on nine, it was way too many. So what I'm going to do is try to sew up these without it noticing, being noticeable. I'm going to sew these buttonholes shut, if I can do that, so that I can use these buttons. If it's a failure, I'll be looking for different buttons. I found some that were smaller, but um, they didn't do it. I thought these just looked perfect. So I can't wait to wear this, although it's going to be a sample in the shop, but I think I'll be wearing this when I go out in the evening this summer. It'll be a perfect thing. So I wanted to show you, we have fabulous colors in the modern cotton. And modern cotton is a, and I'll read you what the cotton, it says, it's um, five stitches over four inches. So whether you consider that worsted or DK, I, I consider it worsted. Anyway, I wanted to show you the colors because this is, and that sweater is so soft and lovely. Um, and this is a nice yarn to knit with. I don't think it's, it's not splitty, um, which some people complain about, some cottons are. So I'm going to show you the colors. This one is called Abbott Run. Beautiful summer color. This is my favorite one in the summer with a pair of white pants. This is called Goddard, a navy blue. And this one is RISD. And we have Rose Cliff. Cliff, that's a pretty color. And a lot of these play nicely together, I think. Um, Piper and Warbler. Isn't that a beautiful blue? And Viola. This is the color that um, I, we did that sweater in, and it's called Sandy Point. But could you see like a striped sweater in that or this? And I think I just love putting odd colors together, like big, bold stripes in this. And then we have um, Brenton Point. We've had this color for a couple of years, but we did get some of these are brand new to us. This is called Water Fire. That's a beautiful one. And finally, got Gadwall. Gadwall, I think it's called. Are but also a Rhode beautiful. Hmm? Are they in Rhode Island? Um, yes. With the RISD Baroka. and the Baroka. Water. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're right over the border, yeah. I think, from Massachusetts. And then I had one other thing to show you. We love Rios. And I just thought we got some new couple new colors in. Um, but what I wanted to show you is their solids. So they're doing solid colors now. This one is called um, Chaja, Chaja, I don't know, C-H-A-J-A. I should get the pronunciations on these. And um, this is, we've had this, this is called Sunset, but these, they're just beautiful solids, and you can do all kinds. This is Frank Oker, but this is another new one called Dolce de Liche, which I thought was beautiful. And it, you know, they play together all these colors. Um, and this one is called Uruguay. It's a gorgeous periwinkle blue. 
we had this in and it sold out right away so catch it while you can and this is um, Santa Rita gorgeous color and um, a much sought after black because we don't carry a lot of black yarn we we do and people don't like to knit with it one thing I would say <coughs> if you want to knit with black get yourself one of those and we had them in the shop for a while maybe I'll get them again those um, you can get a magnifier with a light or you can get just um, a thing that goes around your neck that has two little lights and you'd be surprised what a difference that makes it's amazing Anyway, I think that's it except for one more thing. I didn't mention our sock workshops. Um, and I still don't. I apologize. I don't have the dates, but I promise I'll do them by, I'll try to do them next week. Um, I think they're probably going to be on Saturday afternoons. And we're going to do um, basic toe-up magic loop socks for those people who are just beginners. But for those of you who have gone beyond that, we're going to do, I have some patterns that have cables in them, um, but I'm open to other people if they find a pattern that they like. But it, it's called Beyond Basic Socks. So what we want to get into is dressing up our socks and making socks that are fun and fun to wear. Um, and a, a lot of people love wearing them with, like, with clogs or just as beautiful house socks that you wear around your house and that you love to wear. I've even seen, well, I haven't seen them lately, but years ago, they made um, see-through clogs. So you could see your, you could see your patterned socks. Anyway, we'll have that announcement and I hope that you'll want to sign up and um, do some adventures with um, Beyond Basic Socks. So I hope you have a great week of knitting. Um, the weather is getting warmer. I think Massachusetts kind of missed winter. We didn't really have much. Maybe earlier in the earlier in the winter we did, but it's 60 something today. And um, I think it's going to stay warm for a while. So enjoy. Go knit outside. Might be fun. Have a good week. Bye-bye. <laughs>